From thatching to stonemasonry or metalwork, Britain's master craftsman was central to every aspect of life. Down the centuries, their workmanship has defined the fabric of this country, from the grandest cathedral to the simplest of tools. What you've got is medieval thatch, which is not just interesting in itself, but the details of it. There are still guardians of these crafts working today, who are dedicated to taking the long tradition of these skills into our modern world. I'm going to rotate it round, keeping the bevel on the work. In this series, complete beginners with a genuine passion to learn will be given an intensive introduction by some of these experts. How does this compare with the sort of pace they'd have to go at? Remarkably slow. <laughs> right. <laughs> but can a complete novice master even the basic elements of the craft in a short space of time, however intensive? If the work's wrong and not fit for purpose, as it were, it'll have to be removed. And will they have acquired the skills to make something that is both beautiful and useful? It's a real honour, really, to be able to lay a thatch on a, on a piece of history. For around 7,000 years, man has cultivated a number of grasses as cereal crops and gathered the seed or grain to use for food. But at the same time, they've grown straw, which the grasses have borne the heads on. And this is the basis for one of our very oldest traditional crafts, because the straw is the raw material for thatching. I guess that everybody's idealised vision of rural Britain would include a thatch cottage. But from thatch covering well over half a million homes in 1900, that figure is today just 50,000. And where at the turn of the 20th century, thatching employed a workforce of around 50,000, now there are under 1,000 thatchers left in the country. I'm on my way to Oxfordshire to meet two of them, Matt Williams and Dave Bragg. They've over 25 years of thatching experience between them and are passionate about keeping the heritage and tradition of this craft alive. I've got a, a special interest in thatching because about 30 years ago, when I was in my early 20s, I wanted to be a thatcher. And I had a friend who was a master thatcher who said he would take me on as an apprentice. And I fully intended to do it, but he said I'd have to sign up for seven years because it would take about four years to train and then another three years to get some value out of me. And I just felt I couldn't commit for that long. And life took me in other directions, but I've always slightly regretted that. I think I would have loved it. Shift some of this. This is going a bit deeper in here. Matt and Dave's current job is on an 800-year-old cottage near Whitney. Hello. Hiya. Mm. All right. Rethatching normally happens every 20 to 30 years, and the thatch on this roof is more than ready for renewal. I can smell it. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I don't yeah it's got that sort of slight, fusty, mildewy smell. How many layers are we looking at there? You've got one, two, three, four. There's five layers there that I can see clearly. And what sort of age is that? If you thought that you had an average of 25 years for a thatch, yeah. it's going to be at least 125 years so to get to there. So we're back into Victorian thatch? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. And does that aspect of the history, is that part of the fascination? You are a part of that continuous line of people who have the same skills. And those skills only still exist because they've been passed from generation to generation. And do you think it's important that we keep thatching? Do you think it matters? Yes, I think it does. It's part of our cultural heritage. We'd lose part of the look of our country. You wouldn't tear down Big Ben. Working with buildings that are part of the nation's heritage brings with it grave responsibility. And it takes an apprentice four years to master the necessary skills. So how do you feel about taking on three people for six weeks and trying to lick them into some sort of shape? It'll be interesting. You need determination, because it will not be fun at times. It is an all-encompassing thing. It's a lifestyle, you know, more than just a job. Our three would-be Thatchers each have their own motives for wanting to learn and ultimately master this craft. Sam Hare is a painter and decorator and lives with his girlfriend in Dulwich. For him, a born and bred Londoner, this is a chance to swap his uninspiring city grind for a rural life mastering an ancient craft. That's a major appeal to me, that, that it is a dying art. It's an art form. I'm going to learn an art form and hopefully be very good at it. 
Kate Edwards builds cob houses and wants to learn to thatch for a very simple reason. She wants to thatch the roof of the cottage that she's building for her and her partner. I've been thinking about this for two and a half years. I've been looking forward to the opportunity to thatch. I've been sort of like, oh, I can't wait to get onto that roof. Colin Woomwell is a roofer, and he lives in Felixstowe with his wife and their five-year-old daughter. And he's a long-held ambition to follow in his grandfather and his great-grandfather's footsteps. I would love to bring thatching back into the family, because it's kind of got lost. Now I've got this opportunity to put it into practice and do thatching. It means well to me, yeah. A lot of people like the idea, but you, it really is a certain kind of person that will actually follow that idea through and be able to stick at it. I've only observed this maybe four or five times, and maybe my observations are completely, you know, over-romanced in my head. I'm surprised I haven't had an accident, because I'm just looking at every single thatch roof I go past. You just want to touch it. They have to look at what we're doing. They have to replicate it exactly. There isn't really any space within a six-week training course for people to think that they know better than we do. <laughs> it's straw at the end of the day. How hard can it really be? Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Well, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Exciting. Wow. This is the roof that you will be working on over the next six weeks. Oh, my God. Excellent. That's amazing. Can't wait. Go on up, have a look at the roof. Right. Okay. Next one along. There you go. Here's on Matt. Matt. Yeah. The real challenge for these three is not just whether they can acquire the necessary knowledge to thatch. That they probably can do. They've got to do in the six weeks, but that's just the beginning. The tough thing is whether they're going to find the necessary qualities within themselves to take that knowledge and apply it for years and years to come and use it to transform their lives. Now, the key to everything we're doing here is going to be persistence. Make no mistake that anything you put onto this roof that we're not happy with will absolutely come will come off. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think there is every chance that by the end of this course that each of you walks away knowing that on this roof there is a part of the work that you have done and that's going to stay there and work very nicely for the next, you know, 25 years. During the course, the trainees will learn the fundamentals of thatching from learning how to bend the hazel spars that keep the thatch on the roof, to packing and blending the straw correctly to ensure that the roof remains watertight. And at the end of the period, whichever one of them manages to master these techniques best, will have the opportunity to go on to work on the rethatching of National Trust properties. But before the apprentices are allowed anywhere near a roof, they're first off to Matt and Dave's storage barn, this is where they will begin to learn the process of managing the unruly straw. They start with making yelms, which are effectively the tiles of a long straw thatch roof. Now, it may look to you just like a bundle of straw, but actually to get to that point takes a surprising amount of skill and actually hours and hours of practice. This is your basic building block of, of thatch. You've got a top edge and a bottom edge and a sloped face. Now, if that's done well, that face should be at the right pitch so that when we lay it on the roof, that's at the same pitch as the roof. For the roof we're going to be doing, we're going to need about 600 packs of these <laughs> to be made. Now, if you can make 40 in a day, you're doing really, <laughs> really well. We'll just give you a job. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, we'll see. <laughs> Get on. <laughs> <laughs> To prepare a yelm, the straw is first loaded onto what the thatchers refer to as a bed. It's then given a thorough soaking to make it more manageable. It's basically, you don't want to waste anything. It'll all go on. The straw is then drawn from the bed and placed as straight as possible on a bench. This very sort of simple but necessary process has actually begun. And this is the first moment when you feel this is how roofs are put together. The thatcher then pulls away any remaining tangled pieces and shapes the correct angle of the finish yelm. So what's interesting is what you're, you're getting on the table is thatch. Yeah. You have essentially prepared what the roof is going to be. And then to lock that knot off, you just make a loop with your fingers, hold it over the knot that you've tied, pull it in underneath, 
and that's that not locked into place. And that's your yell. Easy. Well, it is when you've done it for years and years. A thatcher in a barn must prepare 40 yelms a day to ensure that a thatcher on the roof can do his full day's work. And as they're just starting out, the trainees are set the initial challenge of preparing 40 between the three of them. You don't want any of that stuff, do you? That stuff can come out. That yeah. stuff all. In terms of time, how does this compare with the sort of pace they'd have to go at? Remarkably slow. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's lost income if you don't hit your targets because the thatchers are waiting to have their yelms turn up. If they get a third less yelms than they expected, then they will do a third less work the following day. So it has quite substantial consequences. About two thirds the weight of the rest of them. Then the next ones you're making, just okay. a little more material in each yelm. Keep doing the same mistake, it's very annoying. We've got about an hour and a half left to go. And we're looking for another 18. Being stuck in a concrete barn all day, preparing yelms, isn't exactly what the trainees had in mind. I expected it to be delivered on a truck and me be on a roof ready, waiting for the thatch, you know, already processed as we're doing, rather than going through all this. I do this all day, it doesn't bother me. It's not hard. I just want to, you know, finish in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Go lie. Go lie down. Last 40. I think that's a bloody good effort today. Well done, well done, guys. Thank well you. done. Well done, chaps. Yes. Couldn't have done it without you. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely exhausted. Completely knackered. It wasn't a hard day's work for me. You know, I, I, I can do a a hell of a lot more than that. Look at that. Severe rash. <sighs> I didn't know it was going to be this hard. <clears throat> Thatching a roof will cost anywhere from 10 to 30,000 pounds, depending on the size of the roof. The work is labor intensive and slow. It will take fully six weeks to rethatch this small cottage, for example. Add to that the surprisingly high cost of materials, 5,000 pounds worth of straw on this job, and you're not left with much room for profit. You're probably looking at earning £25,000 a year, I suppose. It's not phenomenal. <laughs> you know, you do this because you love it. Today, the master thatchers continue working on the roof where our trainees will eventually get to lay some thatch. That's been stuffed in. It's here, just there. But that's weeks away yet. First of all, the old thatch must be cleaned back. Hello. Hello. Right, uh, so you strip this out? We're going to remove some of these rotted down top layers and put back a layer right. exactly the same way that these are below. I hadn't realised that you simply added layers onto pre-existing ones. I somehow assumed that rethatching a house involved taking it all off and putting all new on. I think that's part of the genius of straw thatching, actually. Nothing's wasted. So even when a layer of material is rotted down to maybe only two or three inches thick, it still has an insulating value um, in the roof. It still has a value to waterproof the roof. Even stripping a roof is a skilled operation. Take too much off, and you're needlessly destroying perfectly good work that might be hundreds of years old. It's absolutely crazy how loose this actually is. You don't actually realise how loose it is until you actually see the process. You've got gale force winds. How does it stay up there? As Dave gets on with the bit that takes judgment and experience, the trainees work as his labourers. It's really hard. It's a killer. <sighs> Having taken the loose stuff off, Dave has discovered the extent of the wear and tear. It's getting more and more like soil here. Got some fantastic worms in there. There's thousands in here. And they're just busily turning all that wet straw into like absolute compost, which is what a, a, what a thatch roof is, essentially. It's a, it's a controlled compost heap. It's just, it's, from the day you put it on, it's decomposing. Sorry, lads. Well, you guys can move out. Go on. After three hours of graft down on the ground... I can't get the oxygen. Dave allows the trainees to try their hand up on the roof. What we're going to do, we're going to take off the top layer. OK. This is a whole new approach to roofing for Colin. You've got to be sensitive and gentle you know, with it a little bit. I'm kind of used bit, to beating but... up a roof, really. 